Hey everyone. For the club set this month for Kiwi Lane, I thought it would be really cool to take my snap frame and do something different with it. <laughs> I haven't done anything with my snap frame since it first came out and I thought it was time for a change. And the color that I originally had done for my frame matched our club set fairly well. It's got the same bluish tones and everything else in it. So that's what kind of gave me the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and work on my snap frame with my Kiwi Lane club set for our collaboration video this month. So I hope you'll create along with me if you'd like or that this inspires you to try the snap frames if maybe perchance you have not done so yet. Because I really think that the snap frames are really cool. Um, they're, you know, it's not my style either, but every now and then an idea comes along that you think, you know, will really play into using the set. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and, and get it to really come in and play nicely with my sets here. And I don't know what I'm gonna come up with exactly because, you know, I haven't thought that far ahead. But, We'll see where we go. Wait, let's see where we go. Okay. Where's this one? Okay, here we go. And as you can see, I have not played with this set yet at all. So I'm thinking of running this along here maybe, and then doing, you know, a little bit of 3D around the edge. Um, bring the doily in, maybe. And these ones, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. We shall see. One of the sets that they do recommend, along with ours, was the Blossom set. And... You know, it is kind of cute. It's got that tulip and, and spring feel to it. You know, I wonder, let's do, where is my blossom here? There it is. Okay, so that one there. And then, you know what I think I wanna do? I'm gonna take blossom, and then I'm gonna combine and throw in our new and fun bunny, if I can find where I put him. <laughs> There's a bunny there. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking, okay. So I think I'm gonna kind of go away from the water can for this one, and I think I'm gonna kind of take on that Easter theme with this and I'm gonna bring in the tulip and do some eggs. Yeah, okay, so that's what I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna use the vine and then I think I'm gonna do an Easter thing there. And then bring in my little doily and I think I'm gonna do like three tulips. Go one, two, three. Okay. And then maybe do some. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Okay. okay. Do that for the tulips, right? And then the green. And then let's see what else I got here. Um, dum, 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 dum. Ooh, that's pretty. Let's use that. Ooh, yeah, that'll work really nice, I think. Okay, let's go that way. 
And then, oops, my Easter guy is over here. Lost my bunny, he done hopped away. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And then for the frame, I want to use these. But I think I'm gonna stay with the Easter theme. Even though that's kind of a little bit off of where this club set went. And then I think I'm just gonna do the, this shiplap. And then go from there. Okay. Now again, these are, you know, I mean, you don't think of them as two-sided, but you can use this smooth side just as easy as you can use the shiplap side. So, you know, these can do like a dual purpose. Like I could do that St. Patrick's Day on the one side and then, you know, come back and do Easter on the other. I, there's lots of things I can do with this. There's lots of ways I can go with it. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and go the way I was thinking. So that's gonna be my background. And then this is gonna be my piece there. All right, so it's gonna be this way, like so, and then it's gonna be that behind it. And I think that's good to go, okay? And the question do I wanna, yeah, I wanna keep it this way. Okay, so then I want to do tulip and bunnies. So he's going to be here like this. Oops. I lost my foam piece for the back of this, so I need to fix it and find out where I put it because it's hiding. Okay, so that's going to be there like that. And this tulip, this egg, like so. And then three tulips. And what I can do too is I can get this grassy piece and I can do down here and just do like one couple of the different grasses, this, that, and the other, and flip them back and forth. Okay. I can do that. Okay, so it's gonna be a lot of green, gold for the tulip. Is there another green? That's not that one. <laughs> Don't want to use my good pieces for just this one thing. Okay. Um, all right, so is there green on the backs of any of the sayings that I don't want? Ah, there's this one, which a beautiful garden is a work for. Okay, I'm going to use that because I won't use that saying. Okay, so I'm going to use this for my grasses. Okay, and then I'm going to use this one for my tulip base, this one for my tulip top. And then, I don't really think I have any other color color for that. And then my bunny is gonna be a chocolate brown, which I don't think I have in this kit. So he's gonna be, oh, I have a cream though. He's kinda pretty. Do the bunny that way. And then my basket, May your journey always lead you. Okay, yeah, the basket can be out of that. That's perfect. And then I think that's good. Okay, so I've got that. And then this is going to be the front to this, I think. Yeah, because I'm not going to use that. Okay. So. Take that back away for now. So this is gonna go right here onto this piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace this out. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and trace this. I'm not gonna cut it as close as I can, but 
I'm gonna cut it close and I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay, like so. All right, all right, and then now I'm gonna cut the inside. Whether I don't want, I don't have to save any of this, so I'm really kind of not going to. Um, I'll use it for something else later on, but I'm just gonna go ahead and try to get into these points relatively close. I'm not gonna get exact. I wanna stay a little bit on the outside of this line. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of come in with my scissors there from the back and then kind of, it's gonna be hard to, to manipulate some of the lines a little bit. So I'm just gonna kind of do what I can the best I can. There's a reason why I'm not going all the way up to this line. And the reason why is because I am trying to, um, I don't want to go ahead and have it to where the wood is exposed. I want to have this going up as close as I can. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in in just a little bit with my um, sanding block, this little guy. It's a nail file that they use for nail salons. And then I'm going to use this on the edges of my wood to get the paper to match up perfectly to the wood. If I tried to cut it Odds are, <laughs> I'm not gonna get it right. Um, and I'm, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to that. So I would rather spend the time using my nail files and sanding it down. That is me personally. If you wanna try and cut it, please by all means try um, and do it your way. This is just how I choose to do it. And it is making it a little bit difficult and it is making it a couple more steps more than what, you know, a lot of people would be like, oh my gosh, just do it this way. That's fine, do it, do your thing, you know, do you. You don't have to do what everybody else does or the way everybody else says to do something. You do you and what's easy for you and what's best for you. And this is my way. <laughs> this is how I do me. Okay. Okay, so that's it. Um, everybody is gonna differ right here at this point on uh, what glue they're gonna use and, and what works best. And I like this one and I like this, it, you know. Again, everybody's different. So you do what you think you like, Mod Podge, use whatever you wanna do. Me personally, I am a Scotch person. So my glue of choice is Scotch quick dry adhesive, which is what's in here, but don't tell Tombow. <laughs> I emptied out the Tombow glue and put my scotch in here because I love this dispenser, but I don't like the glue. So I like my scotch glue, so that's what I put in here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do mine. And there's a reason why I like this dispenser here in just a second, and I'll show you. Well, there, you can see it, actually. There's a little bit of a thing here that you can bulble it all around and, and do that, but I've been keeping my dispenser upside down, so it's not going to do that for me because all my glue is down this way because I have one of those glue holders that holds my glue upside down to keep it dispensing nicely. There we go. Um, a lot of people differ here as well. Some people will just go ahead and take their finger and get it all mashed out. Um, the only thing about doing this that you have to be careful of is when you're using your finger, that's gonna apply a little bit of heat down to this, which means your glue is going to slightly start trying to cure 
so you need to work fast because again this is scotch quick dry and it is not a joke when they say that it is quick dry okay so please take that into account okay i'm gonna stick it here get it on my edges flatten it out nice and good make sure my wood's not showing anywhere Make sure it's all nice and flat. Look at that, that's so nice. Nice and smooth and flat. And again, as I'm moving this and moving my hands in here, I am curing this glue and giving it some nice heat. Okay. Get my little fingers clean here. Okay. Clean up my little work area. See if I got it anywhere else. Okay, nope, good. Okay. Now, throw that away. And before I put this back down, make sure. Oh, come on, silly thing. I'm dry. Kind of a stickler when it comes to making sure I'm doing things the way I should be doing them. Okay, there we go. All right, and again, now this is where I was saying you want to see that little bit of an edge here. Now there's, there's two ways to go about doing this once you get to this point. You can go ahead and you can take an X-Acto blade, which for the life of me, I have no idea where mine is. And you can come in with that X-Acto blade and you can cut in here and you can do that. Or you can do what I'm about to do. And what that is, is again, I'm coming in here with any kind of sanding block, any kind of sanding paper, and I'm just coming down on this paper. And what it's doing is it's sanding this edge. And it's, it's doing a couple of things. It's sanding the edge of the paper down and coming down onto the wood. Now, I am, if you'll notice, there's a burn here because this was laser cut. Um, it is taking off that brown from that burn, which I hope you can see that, um, which is fine by me. I don't, I don't have a problem with that because I'm going to use my wonderful vintage photo and come in here and hit it with that. So showing that little bit of white is not going to matter because it's going to change to brown later. Okay, but what I it tells me is it makes me know that I'm getting to the wood and I'm not leaving this little remnant of paper here. Okay. So that's what it's telling me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this and I'm going to fast forward so you can... I'm sorry, I'm getting off camera again. Um, I'm going to fast forward my video so you can see the finished product and you don't have to sit here and watch me sand and do whatever else. Um, another trick... Before I put this away, if I can find it, if it's here, which I think it is. I'm not fancy. I don't own a Dremel tool, but I did used to have a dog. <laughs> and I had one of those nail files for dogs. And this is a little bit loud, but it's a grinder here. It's a grinding wheel. And so you can also take it and you can go in and sand out those pieces as well. Okay, it's not as nice of a finish as the sanding block, but it's definitely quicker, as you can see, and it's noisier, and it does have a little bit of a fluff that it gives off. But, you know, again, just a different way of doing it. Okay, but you see here, there's a lot of dust, hang on. Okay, here's, here's the problem with that tool is I can't get into this point. It does great on all these edges, okay? But it cannot get into this point the way I want. So that's where this little guy comes in really handy. I can really get in to that point and get my nice crisp edge there. Okay? So again, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward and finish this off.
So again, so that's what it's going to look like. There's our framing. And then going to take our distress ink. Okay. I'm going to hit that edge. And get that brown back. You see how that's getting that nice little wood burn back? And if there's areas that need to kind of get dark in a bit, you just go back in there with that vintage photo and it darkens that up real nice. Okay, believe it or not, this is a water-based type of ink, so it'll stain wood. Um, when I did my first project on the snap frames, let me show you so you can see it. When I first did my wood, this is distress ink. This is this background here, and you can see some of the, the wood part of it kind of comes through because distress ink is translucent. So I used my dauber and I used um, a paper towel because I didn't, you know, have other anything else at the time. And I would put the distress ink down there and then I'd use the paper towel to kind of smear it around a little bit. And this is the effect that I got. And I kind of really liked it. It was, you know, a little bit of a watercolor backsplash type. So it gave me the ability to dye, if you will, this background into a similar, similar color scheme to whatever I was working with. And I really kind of liked that look. So I learned very quickly that you could do that with the Distress inks and wood, which is kind of cool. So if you don't have the right shade of something that you like, again, Distress Ink to the rescue. Okay. okay. All right, I think I'm happy with that. And there we go. Cover that for now. All right, I like that. Now I'm going to do my basket. And I like this weave on this, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It's a little bit of a tight fit with the handle, but that's okay. What I can also do is say my handle goes off of this paper and it doesn't fit exactly right. What I could do is I can plan my bunny to kind of get his ears to where they cover where that handle's supposed to be, or where the handle misses, I should say. So that is okay with me, but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of fudge it a little bit. So another thing that I could do as well would be to do the handle out of a different color and have the basket with this, and then you would never know that discrepancy there as well. Okay. Got that. And again, there's a couple different ways that you can do this inside piece here. Um, you can just cut it out, start from the center and then cut out. You can cut straight through here. Lots of different ways that you can do it. Me personally, I do the center thing. Um, not sure if I'm gonna use that for anything. So I'm gonna try and see if I can kind of go around it a little bit. Again, if I had my X-Acto blade, I would probably use that. But since I don't, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay, and I find that if I come in from the back, because I'm left-handed, it keeps the blade right here where I can see the line, and so that kind of helps me cut a little bit better. 
Okay, and again, moving my paper, not my scissors. And then I'm going to make my tulips. Now I wanna kind of, um, just in case, depending on how things go, I'm gonna alternate these. So this is the green on the back too. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of flip flop just to see how it turns out. This one's a little skinny on the side, so it can move on you, but don't stress that. Okay. Again, just trying to hold it as steady as I can. But if it moves a little bit, it's not that big of a deal. It's not a disaster. Oops, move my template, that's okay. If I finish this cut into here right now, that's gonna leave this center part really weak. So I'm not gonna do this yet. I'm gonna leave that for last. I'm gonna come back this way really quickly and I'm gonna do my part down here so that I get control of this paper and I can move and do that. Okay, you see how that went? If I want them to be perfect and if I want these edges to come in and be a little bit more smooth, what I'll do, grab my handy dandy little nail file and I can smooth these edges. 
and make this a nice rounded egg. For those of you that don't cut circles or cut that angle of a circle or an oval very well, this tool is extremely handy. It's a nail file. I mean, imagine this egg is your nail and you just file it with the same motions that you would to round your nail. And there you have rounded your egg. And if you have a little bit of a flap like this, then just come at it from one angle and then come at it from the back and that'll sand that off. So come out of the top and then come out of it at the bottom. And then that gets that nice and sharp and crisp again. Okay. All said and done. Great way if you have like cricket cuts or anything else like that and you get those little really wonky edges and they're fuzzy and didn't cut all the way through. That's This is a great way to really get rid of those fuzzy edges too. Okay. You just take the file and you run it on the back and then you run it on the front and it smooths out those edges really nice. Okay. I'm going to erase those lines just a bit. Same thing with Mr. Bunny here because they're a little bit dark. Normally I wouldn't erase, but because he's on white, I might need to do that. Okay, there we go. And this guy's going to be blue, or teal rather. And then our basket. As I'm inking this, it's kind of going from that cream because I'm inking this in that brown, and it's kind of making this and picking this up and making it a little bit on the brown tone because it's really picking up this inside intricacy of this pattern paper, and it's turning it into a brownish look and feel because it's picking up those tones, which is really cool. If I wanted to, I could take my ink and I could continue to make this whole entire piece brown but I don't really want to do that because I you know want to keep some continuity with some of these papers for each of these different pieces okay and I don't want these back pieces to show through but I do want to have something to glue my pieces down to so I'm not going to completely cut that off, but I am gonna cut it down. Okay. Remember, when you're doing the inking on really thin areas like this, Ink is wet, water-based, it has moisture to it. Whenever you're coming into small areas, you're putting that moisture into this paper, you are going to weaken those areas. So you need to be really careful about how much ink that you really put into those areas so that you don't overdo it in those spots. And again, I'm just gonna cut this top off because I don't wanna get my tulip showing and then cut this down and cut this down. Okay, so now when I put this on here, you're not gonna see any of that piece, but I will have this back part to glue to. Okay. So again, I'm gonna put my glue down. Just a little bit, you don't need a lot. Okay, make sure none of that's green is showing. I'm good to go. 
and down she goes. Now I could really brighten this whole piece up if I took some paint and did this background of this in like a yellow or that light green or very, very light blue, but I've got so much going on here. I kind of like how it's looking with that tone. So I think I'm gonna leave that alone. like so. And again, by no means is this my forte in designing or anything else but I'm gonna say this if I can do this snap frame you can do it too okay it is not difficult Okay, see that green is just showing through there, so I gotta tilt that a little bit more to get that out of there. Okay. And again, I can't move it now because it's dry. <laughs> it is stuck like glue. Top off, take the bottom off. And put on the glue. Okay, oops, I didn't ink him. Didn't ink it, that glue's gonna dry. Okay, here I gotta go work fast. Work fast, okay. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Just like so. Okay. I really want some kind of a grass or some kind of a texture down there. I am having a hard time with that. Okay. Just not gonna work for me. Okay. I wonder if I did that background in a green tone of some kind if that would work. I don't know if I have one that I like though. Just think this would blend too much with that. Mm. 
Well, maybe not. We'll see. I don't know. It brightens it up a lot. I'll say that. It brightens it up more. It really does. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay. All right, let's move that one off. Okay, so that being said, I'm gonna switch to the smooth side because I still wanna be able to use that as a decorative piece and then I'm just going to go ahead and cut. Now remember I'm using this frame here so I don't have to go all the way to my edges and I want that magnet to kind of have a nice clean grip because you know I want to make sure that my magnet holds really nice and well. All right now we have the right color. Right. Got a little bit of a blurch there, but you know what? That's okay. I can always turn this around this way and cover that with one of my tulips. Okay. I have glue all over me now. <laughs> okay. So let's see what we got. Let's bring out our pieces. A lot of times when you put papers and everything else um, onto these pieces, I think I just lost one of my eggs. Um, when you go to fit this into your frame, it can be a little tight, which is fine, especially for me because I have lost my fuzzy foamy piece. So a little bit tight for me is okay. I kind of want that because I know with my frame that I have lost that um, foam core piece that goes in there. If you as a customer lose that piece or something happens to it or whatever else, contact customer support. They will take care of you. There we go there, we're okay, we're all set. Okay, so there's that. Now, um, when I go to push my pieces down, that magnet's gonna drop because it doesn't have a lot of resistance to it. I mean, it's, it's, it's that easy. So, um, you know, take that in mind when you're doing your designing that you wanna, you know, make sure that you're placing things nice and gingerly and then when you go to to get it all done then you can push it down now I almost forgot I did want to do that vining on the outside but something that I really want to take into consideration is this bottom piece here and this frame I think it would be very beautiful but if I put this on here to attach it to the wood, I'm gonna need a strong adhesive or I'm gonna need a light adhesive that's only gonna be a temporary bond. So you need to keep that in consideration if you're thinking about decorating your frame, okay? So keep that in mind. But I do think that's what I wanna do. I just don't know what I wanna do it in. Oh, I wonder if I could do it in the blue. Oh, that looks kind of pretty. Hmm. I might do that. When it's all said and done, I'm going to try it and see how it looks because that's going to be a lot of cutting and I'm not going to bother you and, and make you watch me do all of that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up, figure out where did I put my other egg piece. I can't find it. It has high-tailed and hit the bunny rack on me. Okay, there's the bunny. 
we want here, right? Mr. Cottontail goes there. I'm going to go ahead and put adhesive on this. So that I can kind of place these guys. Trying not to put adhesive on the center because I know myself and I know well enough that if I do that, I'm going to wind up tearing it. Because I pull down on my adhesive really hard. So, where did that other egg go? There it is. Of course I dropped it. Okay, so these two are gonna go here, like so. Okay, and then we did, so one. Okay, I'm gonna tilt this up a little bit, or actually I can get up, but I can look down this way, because I wanna make sure I'm doing this the way I want it. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my bunny in my basket. Put the bunny in the basket. Now when I'm putting adhesive on this basket, I'm only gonna put it on the handle part because I know my bunny is going to come on top of this handle. And then I'm putting it on the very, very bottom of the basket because I'm gonna try and stick my bunny down here so I don't want adhesive here. Okay, I'm going to make sure my ATG is not sticking and glubering out of it. Okay, good to go there. It's all, oh, see that big gloober? Can you see that? So I need to make sure that that's pulled back behind to go underneath. Okay, gently... Put hat there. And then my bunny can have adhesive. And I'm going to get adhesive up to his ears. Come on. There we go. I'll try and get a little bit of that tail showing through. Okay. All right. So push that down. Okay, like so. Just like that. Again, this is not very elaborate. It's not a whole lot of stuff. Um, it's about, uh, how long are we? About an hour, probably, of work. You know, so don't think that, you know, these are going to be so hard or whatever that you can't do these. You know, these are so easy and they come out really cute. You know, and they're not difficult. They really are not. So if you haven't tried these snap frames, you know, give it a try. Give them a whirl. So there you go. And another thing, you know, if you wanna em embellish this a little bit more and, you know, kind of bring a lot more into it, there's so much more you, you can do this. You can add textures with some grasses or, or whatnot here. I mean, if you really wanted to and, and make this like a really, really forward-thinking Easter piece, you could go get some of that Easter grass, uh, the, the, the hay-looking kind, and you could stuff it in here and then have that hay-look and feel down here. That would give it texture. That would give it dimension. That would be really cute. Another thing that you can do is you could do like an Easter title here. You can do an Easter title up here and have it overhang a little bit. You know, give it a little bit more dimension that way. The sky is the limit with this. And you can really do anything you want. And there's a little bit of adhesive sticking off of that flower there. Okay. You can do anything you want with these. And they are they can be as simple as you like. They can be as elaborate as you like. I'm a simple person. I like the simple look. So for me, this is totally cute. 
and it's a little shadow box and it's really adorable and I like it. So give it a chance and you know try the snap frames if you haven't already. They are really fun to, to work and play with. If you're into dried flowers and things like that, this would have been a really perfect set for you to use with gardening. And you could have taken some of your dried flowers and put some of your dried flowers on here. That would have been beautiful too. And then, you know, went ahead and used the picture and done that. Give it a chance. I hope you enjoyed this. And again, I hope to see you soon. And please continue on with the collaboration. If you like my channel and like my work, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.